Dozens of schools in mid-Missouri have canceled or delayed classes ahead of forecasted cold and snow. Thanks for choosing us at 10 o'clock. I'm Ashley Strohmeyer. And I'm Lucas Geisler. Columbia, Boonville, Southern Boone R1, and Mexico have all canceled classes. Jefferson City School District will be on a two-hour delayed start. All MACC locations will also not open until 10 a.m. Tonight, we have live team coverage of the Storm Track Weather Alert Day that's bringing near single-digit temperatures. They could cover roads in ice tomorrow morning. First, let's go out to Chief Meteorologist Jessica Quick, who's tracking the frigid temperatures set to stick around through Friday morning. Jessica. It looks like we're gonna stay right around that freezing mark, which is 32 degrees for a little bit longer, but that colder air really going to start to move in over the next few hours once the snow passes through. I'm tracking the last round that'll be moving east of our area just after midnight. We're getting a little bit of a break where we had those heavier snow bands earlier this evening. So you saw those come through at about 7 or 8 o'clock for Columbia and then points south. We're getting that break now west of Highway 63, but it's going to be somewhat short-lived. You'll see that next band is starting to move in from the west. So as we tilt this a little bit, want to take you a little closer. It looks like it is approaching Highway 65 right now. I'm going to see more of that snow heading towards Sedalia and Marshall here soon. If I put a track on it, all these snow showers have been moving at around 40 miles per hour this evening. So that will take it into some of our western counties here through the rest of this evening heading towards Sweet Springs at 10.03, Marshall around the same time at 10.06, Slater seeing some more snowfall at 10.11, Lamont at 10.13, and Keatsville as well at 10.13. And this will be our last round before we start to see things clear up a little bit. And you'll see we are actually going to see much colder temperatures. So once this clears out, not expecting much more for the next few days, I'll show you what we can expect for the rest of this evening with future track. So once this band starts to go through, we are going to be drying out, but that cold air really starts to settle in. By midnight, some of us off to the north are down to around 20 degrees as winds are starting to pick up. See, Kansas City is already down to 16 degrees. As we approach 7 o'clock, the clouds start to move out. We're going to be dropping into the single digits, and it is going to be colder with the wind chills. So the wind Winds will be picking up to about 30 miles per hour. As those low temperatures drop, it is going to feel like around 10 to 15 degrees below zero in some spots. And we're not going to see much warmth until we head towards the weekend. So right now, things are looking okay as far as our temperatures go, but it is going to get much colder. I'll show you the temperatures. We're still around 32 for most areas, but off to the north, that's when we'll start to see that change. Here's what we can expect heading out the door to this evening. Things are improving just a little bit, still seeing mostly covered roads on Highway 63 from Moberly to Jefferson City. Patchy spots where it is slick and slushy on I-70. Things have gotten a lot better on Highway 54. It's not completely clear, but mostly clear here along Highway 54. And if you go south from Jefferson City to Eldon, things have cleared up there. So here's what we can expect going into tomorrow and the rest of the week. It's going to be a short-lived cold blast, but we still have a weather alert day through Friday morning as temperatures dip to around 3 degrees above zero. In the afternoon for Valentine's Day, we have plenty of sunshine. We're going to see a high near 30 degrees. And then into the weekend, things really start to warm up. 40s and 50s. In my next forecast, I'll let you know just how cold it's going to feel. I'll show you the wind chill tracker that we can expect through tomorrow and early Friday. In the last two hours, new road crews reported in Boone County and Columbia to prepare the roads for a possible refreeze. Tonight, ABC 17, Zach Boetto is live in downtown Columbia. Zach, road crews are laying pretreatment now and then trying to beat the ice we're expecting overnight. Ashley Lucas, we're here on Broadway between 6th and 7th Street. And let me show you something. This snow right here, this is the reason why schools and other things are going to be canceled tomorrow. We got snow and water everywhere. Look, we've seen snow before, we've seen rain before, but like I said, everything is wet. The roads are wet, the sidewalks are wet. The problem is when the temperature drops below freezing like it's supposed to tonight and into tomorrow, everything is going to freeze. It's gonna be very dangerous. It's gonna be icy whether you're driving, whether you're walking, whether you're going to school or going to church, anything you're gonna be doing is gonna be slightly dangerous. So you wanna be careful when you're heading out the door. I spoke with a Boone County public works official, a plow driver actually, who said that she might need to spend the night at the Boone County Public Works headquarters overnight. Boone County Public Works officials said they have a 10 person crew working tonight from 7 p.m. to 7 a.m. So we need to try to get the roads dried off before it gets too cold because uh, salt won't be effective, you know, at 
below 20 degrees. Eddington said they plan on having a full 32-person crew come in at 7 tomorrow morning. However, he may activate them early. With the temperature forecasted to stay below freezing, one plow driver said on a night like tonight, she may have to stay at the Public Works headquarters. I may spend the night here. At the station? I might. Time I go all the way home, I live in Highway, Highway 124 in Harrisburg. It's time I go all the way home and I come back, try to come back in the morning, I may not make it back. She said it's important for drivers to put safety first. When uh, when you wake up in the morning, they call off school, MoDOT and other people call off and tell you to stay at home. That's what you do. You stay at home. Stay with ABC 17 News because we're going to continue to track these conditions, the ice, the cold weather that's coming in, and we're going to have more later on in the show from the Storm Tracker. Reporting live in Columbia, Zach Boeto, ABC 17 News. Zach, thanks. Columbia Public Works said it will have continuous operations on priority routes and then continue to monitor road conditions to adjust plans as needed. And now to our crews in Jefferson City. ABC 17's Barry Mangold spoke with road crews there, and then he joins us live at the Missouri River Bridge. And Barry, the Public Works Department will have a full team in tonight. Yeah, Ashley Lucas, in just the last few minutes, the Jefferson City Public Works Department brought in 23 drivers to start working on the roads here, which are at the moment really wet. I've been seeing a lot of water being picked up by the cars driving by on the grass and on cars, though. There you're seeing snow accumulate. In fact, you might actually start seeing some accumulation on my jacket if you look closely. But right now, as I said, the roads are wet. Drivers are moving at what appear to be normal speeds here on 54 and the Missouri River Bridge behind me. But we know that overnight that that freezing chance will be the focus of uh, road crews. And Britt Smith with the Department of Public Works tells me that before now, during the day, they didn't have much to do because of that rain that we saw uh, washing away any pretreatment or salt. And this winter has also taken a toll on the city's supply of salt. Smith said the department is at least 500 tons above average, and it's only mid-February. February. And to give you some uh, context, the department typically uses two or 300 tons of salt every single winter event so now they're about one or two uh, winter events ahead of schedule right now or above average I should say so today to sum it up the department held off on pretreatment but they will be layering it on in the next few hours ahead of that chance of refreeze live in Jefferson City Barry Mangold ABC 17 News in Columbia, the Wabash bus station downtown will be open as a warming center tonight. The city is paying hundreds of dollars on average each night the center is open. ABC 17 Sydney Olson is live at Wabash. And Sydney, you found out where the money goes. The buses have stopped running for tonight, but there is still foot traffic here at Wabash bus station as people are trying to get out of the cold. Now, just over three hours ago, the station opened its doors for the night. I asked the health department how much it costs to keep those doors open overnight. Wabash bus station is one of the few places open overnight in Columbia for people to get out of the snow and cold. The station opened at 7 and will be open as a warming center until 6 a.m. It opens when temperatures are forecasted to be at or below 9 degrees. On average, the city pays around $409 each night the shelter is open. That money is used to pay someone to do security, which is usually someone from airport security. Last time the shelter was open, one officer worked security. City Council Member Mike Trapp says the budget to pay for someone to be there is included in the budget for the police department because airport security officers are trained like police officers. Other places in town like the Armory downtown provide a warm place during normal business hours. There are typically no extra costs for these warming centers because they do not stay open past normal business hours. And you can find a list of warming centers that are open during normal business hours on our website at abc17news.com. Reporting live in Columbia, Sydney Olson, ABC 17 News. Sydney, thanks. Wabash will also be open overnight tomorrow. You can check just how cold it's going to be tomorrow morning before you head out the door. You can do so by downloading the ABC 17 Storm Track weather app. That app gives you access to the live radar track and an up-to-date temperature on the, as well as the wind chills. The app can be downloaded for free from the Apple or Google Play stores. Attorneys for a Columbia business owner want the attorney general to drop its case against him. We told you last week about Demetrius Woods' case. The state Supreme Court said a Cole County judge should not have allowed him to get parole for his 2007 drug conviction. 
His lawyers asked Attorney General Eric Schmidt to drop the case and allow Woods to stay on parole. The AG has said it will not take further action in the case. A man now faces up to two years in federal prison for his role in the death of Carl DeBrody. Anthony R.K. Flores pleaded guilty to lying to investigators in court earlier today. We first told you about this as breaking news on ABC 17 News at 5. According to court documents, he helped his mom move a crate into her storage unit before DeBrody was reported missing in April of 2017. Police later found DeBrody's body inside of the box. Up next on ABC 17 News at 10, where the news comes first. We're learning more about a program in Jefferson City aimed at getting stray cats off the streets. Hear from the people charged with helping these animals out of the cold. And I'm taking you behind the kitchen door of Mizzou Arena. See how your go-to concession stand checks out. Plus, I'm tracking the last of the snow and those bitterly cold temperatures. I'll show you what it will feel like with the wind chill and what we finally will see for the weekend with warmer temperatures on the way. On the way. We had our hands on the inspection records done at Mizzou Arena during Mizzou's last basketball season. ABC 17 Zara Barker takes us behind the kitchen door of the concession stands inside Mizzou Arena. Before you head inside to Mizzou Arena for your next basketball game, I wanted to find out which concession stands have had the most violations. As you're watching the Tigers score, you can also score yourself a hot dog or some popcorn. But while you've got your eyes on the game, have you thought about how clean the place is that makes your food? Well, MU does. Our number one priority is the safety of our guests. We want people coming to the games to be focused on the game, not food safety. That's our job. Liz McCune from the MU News Bureau says inspectors from MU do surprise inspections at Mizzou Arena regularly. According to inspection records I got my hands on, inspectors visited Mizzou Arena at least 10 times during the 2018 to 2019 season. We're taking a look at the whole food uh, delivery process from food prep to when they're actually serving it to our customers and we're making sure that they're following food safety protocols. 15 places inside Mizzou Arena got a visit from MU's own Environmental Health Department. The concession stand with the most violations is the Coca-Cola stand. That's where inspectors found 14 issues inside. That includes multiple food items not in the correct temperature range and employees putting their shoes on the handle of the hot dog warmer. I took a look at the reports on the Coca-Cola stand and they were very minor in nature um, and they were either corrected immediately or there was a plan to correct what was going on within 72 hours. It's important to note that if our inspector has any concerns about public health, that we would immediately close down that stand. McCune told me as far as she knows, that has never happened. The concession stand with the second most violations was Dickie's Barbecue with nine. Those included a leaking sink, food not in the correct temperature range, and jalapenos stored in the sink meant for hand washing only. On the other side, a few concession stands only got one violation during the entire 2018 and 2019 season. Those include Lodge North, Andy's Frozen Custard, and the Bunker Bar. That's ABC 17 Zara Barker reporting. We have a list of all the concession stands inspected and what violations they were cited for up on our website, abc17news.com. While you're there, sign up for our Behind the Kitchen Door newsletters. Our ABC 17 Storm Track weather alert day continues as I'm tracking one last band of snowfall to move across mid Missouri tonight, and then the cold air really starts to settle in over the next few hours. We have this next round of snow approaching some of our western counties now, heading towards Gilliam at 1018. Green Ridge seeing some more snowfall by 1025, as well as Salisbury. Nelson at 1029 in Glasgow. More snow for you at 1033. Our, so far, totals are kind of deceiving. We saw a little bit of melting today and some compaction of that really heavy wet snow. Most of us right now are in that one to two inch range, but these totals could be a little bit higher given how much what we how much we saw melt earlier today. So around three inches for those locations after we saw that melting earlier this afternoon. We have cold air moving in. We've been telling you about this all night. We have a wind, wind chill advisory until noon tomorrow for our northern counties. And that's because we're expecting 
wind chill temperatures to be around 10 to 15 degrees below zero overnight in some of those places up towards Moberly and Macon, Paris. We're going to see lows tonight into the single digits. It'll be around 9 or 10 degrees in Columbia and Jefferson City, making things quite icy into the morning, especially early on. We'll have some sunshine in the afternoon. That should help just a little bit, but our highs are still going to be in the teens, so it is going to be quite slick in many spots with the road temperatures in the teens to around 20 in the morning. They start to improve a little bit towards late morning, early afternoon, especially south of I-70. With that sunshine, the pavement will start to warm up, but once that sun goes down, we are quickly going to see cold temperatures even on the roads once again. So anything that doesn't get treated tomorrow could likely still be isolated and slick tomorrow or into Friday as we'll see temperatures very cold in the morning as well. So we'll have to watch those next few mornings and then things will start to improve towards the weekend. You'll see most of the precipitation is now tracking off to the east and southeast. That Arctic cold front sliding in tonight and that is what will bring our very cold temperatures going into tomorrow. That last bit of snow getting out of here after midnight. We'll see clearing skies from west to east into tomorrow morning. With that sunshine, we are going to see the pavement warm up, but the actual air temperatures stay in the teens. But thankfully, we are going to stay dry for the next several days. Our wind chill for tomorrow morning feeling like around 5 to 6 degrees below zero at 6 o'clock tomorrow morning for Columbia, feeling like about zero in Jefferson City, but even colder as you head farther north. And things stay very bitterly cold during the afternoon with gusty winds through the entire day. Those winds let up going into tomorrow night, but still feeling like the single digits to start out Friday. But things get a lot better for Friday afternoon. It's not going to feel too bad. It'll still be chilly with highs getting up to around 30 on Friday afternoon for Valentine's Day, but really looking forward to the weekend as we'll be back into the 40s and 50s on both days. And right now, it doesn't look like we're going to see much rain until Monday. So thankfully, after this, we're going to get a little bit of a break. Even to start out next week with that rain chance, we're expecting to make it into the mid-50s. All right. Thank you very much, Jessica. Now, turning back to our winter weather coverage, bitterly cold temperatures can be dangerous for people and animals left outside. Tonight, dozens of feral cats will have shelter from the cold. ABC 17's Barry Mangold is live in Jefferson City tonight. Barry, you sat down with one of the caretakers involved in a new program for stray cats. Yeah, Lucas, Ashley, it can only take a few minutes before an animal uh, can catch uh, a hypothermia or develop frostbite. And a new program created last year now has 70 registered stray cats. And a veterinarian tells me that it can help keep the animals and people safe. Got some water for you. Today, Jennifer Turgeon stopped by her colony of 24 cats to leave out water, complete with hand warmers underneath the bowl so it doesn't freeze overnight. She is one of Jefferson City's cat caretakers and has experience helping strays. There are thousands of feral cats in Jefferson City alone. They breed and breed, sick kittens after sick kittens. They become a nuisance to the community. There are 70 registered cats across six different locations in the city right now. Each are fed, given shelter, and get a full checkup with the vet. It's really a proactive measure of population control, and it's, you know, you get the public health benefits too. The cats are spayed or neutered, limiting population growth, and they're checked for rabies and other diseases. Turgeon also tells me that the long-term goal is to stop stray cat breeding here in the capital city. Reporting live in Jefferson City tonight, Barry Mangold, ABC 17 News. Barry, thanks. If you'd like to learn more about the program or how you can help, you can call the Jefferson City Animal Shelter. We'll take you back out live to the ABC 17 Storm Tracker and show you current road conditions around Boone County. We're going to take another live look at the roads tonight. ABC 17 Zach Boeto is live in the ABC 17 Storm Tracker in Columbia. Zach, how's it looking out there? Ashley Lucas, we're on College Avenue approaching Broadway, and as you can see, the roads are wet. And with the temperatures dropping overnight, it looks like we're going to get some frozen roads tomorrow morning. Of course, we're going to be back on the roads at 5 a.m. tomorrow, so make sure you stay with ABC 17 News for all your current road conditions. Reporting live in Columbia, Zach Boweto, ABC 17 News. A former Mizzou and Hickman wrestler is getting ready for the Olympics. ABC 17's Tyler Murray is next with how Jaden Cox has his sights set on gold. 
Sports Sports Zone starts now. Sponsored by U.S. Cellular. The 24th ranked Mizzou wrestling team has owned the Mid-American Conference. This season has been no different. The Tigers defeated SIUE 35-7 tonight. Mizzou is now 11-7 overall, but has won 22 straight MAC goals dating back multiple seasons. The Tigers are now the outright MAC regular season champions and have won the MAC eight straight years. Mizzou has won nine straight conference titles. Former Mizzou and Hickman wrestler Jaden Cox is getting ready for the Olympics. The two-time world champion will wrestle at 97 kilograms as he tries to qualify for the Olympics. Three-time national champion was wrestling at 92, but that is not an Olympic weight class. So this week he had to decide between 86 and 97 kilograms. Cox wrestled at 86 when he won a bronze medal at the 2016 Olympics on a torn meniscus. Two Mizzou volleyball players earned invites today to the U.S. women's national team open tryouts. Mizzou's Tiana Omazich and Anna Dixon will head to Colorado February 21st through the 23rd. Omazich earned all SEC honors last year as an outside hitter and ranked fourth in the SEC in hitting percentage. Dixon, meanwhile, is an outside hitter and a transfer from Kansas State this offseason. The Mizzou baseball team is just two days away from its first game. The Tigers begin the season on the road for a three-game series with Jacksonville State on Friday at 3 o'clock. Mizzou is not eligible for the postseason due to NCAA sanctions handed down after the academic fraud case. The Tigers' goal is to win 40 games this season, including an SEC regular season title. The Tigers are confident they'll get there. I can tell you right now that they are ready to play. They want to go out. Uh, you know, they're, they're ready to leave today, so uh, I, I look for us to, to respond really well. And, you know, we're running into a very good opponent in opening a weekend as well. Blues defenseman Jay Bomeister is doing well, according to the team, after a heart issue caused him to collapse during last night's game. Bomeister is currently undergoing medical treatment at a hospital. This is video of Bomeister collapsing on the bench last night against Anaheim. Medical staff rushed him to the hospital after using a defibrillator to revive him. The NHL post postponed the game, but the Blues say they will play tomorrow against the Vegas Golden Knights. The Blues say they believe Bomeister will make a recovery and that the worst is over. Everyone is just hoping for the best. I think it was an important one for me just to see him and for everybody else to see him. So we FaceTime. Uh, Bo had his opportunity to kind of see everybody. Everybody uh, sent him their wishes. And I think, I mean, I'm not going to speak for everybody, but I'm sure made everybody feel a lot better knowing uh, he was in good hands. Jessica, I'll have one last look at your forecast in just a moment. Tracking our last snow band here, moving in from the west. Temperatures have already dropped into the 20s at Kansas City and eventually falling even more tonight as this arrives. It's going to be moving into Sedalia here in the next couple of minutes as that snowfall pushes off to the east. It'll be moving into Clifton Hill at 1035, Armstrong at 1042, Huntsville and Boone County to 1045, and then Pilot Grove a little bit later at 1050 and eventually Smithton at 1050. That'll move out after midnight, leaving us with low temperatures overnight, falling into the single digits, but it's going to feel even colder with the wind chill. We're going to see those winds picking up to around 25 or 30 miles per hour. Air temperatures tomorrow anywhere from 5 to 15 degrees above, but the wind chills are going to be colder than that, 10 to possibly 15 degrees below zero for some areas uh, north of Highway 24 and 2 tomorrow morning. Definitely going to be a colder day for all of us tomorrow. We are going to see temperatures starting out in the uh, single digits, but only rising into the upper teens. For Friday, we're starting out in the single digits, but cold, a little bit warmer into the afternoon with more sunshine. Thank you, Jessica. Thanks for being with us tonight. Kimmel's next. Have a good night. We'll see you tomorrow.